This is Tom from Evergrey and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives. Welcome to another interview with Sonic Perspectives. My name is Samantha, and today I am joined by Evergrey's founder and vocalist, Tom England. Evergrey are about to release their 13th studio album, A Heartless Portrait, this coming May. And I'm here today hoping to get a little bit of insight into the album and more. So this is your 13th studio album, big milestone. How are you feeling about it? <laughs> I'm feeling uh, exhausted. No, I'm good. Uh, I feel... Uh... I'm f I feel happy that I can, that we can release another quality album within such a short amount of time. Uh, it's uh, it's just a privilege to be able to make music in these days, and and uh, yeah, I, I f feel privileged. And as fans, we're quite privileged. You started out 2021 with Escape of the Phoenix, and following up a a year and just a few months later with another full studio album. But let's not forget in between, you also released a live album before the aftermath. So I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit first. What was hmm. the decision to make a new live album now, especially almost 20 years after A Night to Remember? I mean, in, during the pandemic, we had this opportunity to do a show uh, uh, like June 2020, I think it was. And uh, we just felt that we would you know, we wanted to do something. We didn't see ourselves playing live for a good while, and we had this great camera team there, and we could also set it up with online uh, viewings and all, all of that stuff. So we figured, yeah, let's do that. Let's record it, and let, let's just, you know, release it. Uh, it was not intended to be like, this is the next big uh, Evergrey live album thing. Uh, it's uh, it, it it is a thing. It's a very special thing, but it's a thing that we just released in between albums, I guess. And so, when it does come to a heartless portrait following Escape of the Phoenix, how do they relate to each other? Um, how did you see your sound evolving or your inspirations changing? I mean, we sat down the day after the Escape of the Phoenix came out, and we sat down and we discussed. Uh, the fact that we would probably not be able to tour at all for for at least a year so we 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 just we just decided that maybe we should just try to get back to our studios and see if there is inspiration to write even another album or at least start writing one and so we went one we went back to our writing dance our um, started writing on our own for for like th six weeks i think and and um and then we met up and we had like 50, close to 50 uh, song ideas or riff ideas, at least something, skeletons of ideas. And, and um, we, me and Jonas, uh, the drummer, took them and went back to, started making songs out of them, uh, me and him. And uh, then we met again a month later and, and listened to what we had made and you know checked if everybody thought it was cool and, and uh, added some additional stuff and we sat down and, you know, talked through stuff and yeah so it's a th very worked through album but in a very short amount of time since the last one um, uh, I think it was a smart move for us to also switch labels at the time and come out strong with a new album this quick is uh, great and when we get to start touring we we um, can celebrate two albums instead of one that's very exciting so even though new albums, new label, there's something that's been really stable, and that's been your lineup. You've had the same lineup for about 12 years now. So how have you guys changed how you work together? Um, how do you find your chemistry growing and changing the longer you spend together? Is it really 12 years? I must question that. Isn't it from Hymns for the Broken? Is that When did that come out? 2014, right? Eight years. 2014, right? yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I just I was like, what? Is it that long? I'm getting old. But yeah, what was the question? <laughs> how does it feel to work together for so long? And how have you kind of gelled as a band? I mean, it's great, of course. Uh, many uh, In many aspects, it's, it's something that benefits a band and a project like Evergrey uh, with this big sort of business apparatus around it as well. Because 
we know what we want to do we know what we can't do we do we know what people don't appreciate we know what uh, we know how to the, especially the working process in terms of writing the music we are very confident and nobody's feeling like they're being left out or I think <laughs> but but that's I mean we split everything five ways and you know it's a it's it's a great working environment and everybody's sort of confident with the way we work now that me and Jonas make songs out of the stuff that we write individually and then we sort of perfect them together so yeah it's uh it's something that takes years to come to but at least I mean we were also been I've been in this band since 1993 that's 30 years next year so uh, how old are you I'm 23 See, there you go. <laughs> so we've existed as a band six more years than you're, you have been alive. So which is crazy, right? Uh, I is expected, if, if I was lucky, I expected to do like, do us, I expected us to do like maybe three, maybe five albums. If we would do 10 albums, then I would be sort of, you know, that, that would be it. But uh, yeah, now I see like 20 on the horizon. So it's cool. <laughs> And I guess, so you're coming up with a lot of big 20th anniversaries for the band. It was the 20th anniversary of In Search of Truth last year. We're coming up on a few big 20th, 20th anniversaries. So how has your vision for the band changed? Like, what do you want to accomplish now that you didn't want to accomplish when you started the band? Nothing changed. I want to make the better song. Than, uh, the next song I write once, I need it to be better than the one that I wrote before it. Uh, we still are aiming for world domination and uh, nothing changed. We have the same eager, the same energy and the same, honestly, and, and the same urge to make great music and, and make as many people as possible hear it. Um, I think that's what you need in order to sort of, the great thing also that we are very lucky with and that we don't take for granted at all is that 70 or 75% of our, of, of our fan base come from 2014 and forward. So we have a good amount of new people coming into Evergrey and with the Escape of, of the Phoenix, that was our biggest commercial success in terms of sales and streams and all of that. And to have that on your 12th album is, I guess, pretty unique. And now we hope to, hope to top that with this one. So yeah, nothing changed. Uh, it's the same. We have the same agenda. And so speaking of these new fans, this album is really unique with how much you did involve the fans. The Save Us chorus being recorded from hundreds of fans and then Midwinter Calls, you have audio from um, live shows. Why did you choose to do this and how did you end up working it into the album? I mean, first and foremost, it was because we, we felt like, I mean, it started like this. I, every morning I walk for, walk for 75 minutes out here. I live on the west coast of Sweden and I walk for as long as I can every morning to get my sort of juices going. No, but I mean to get the inspiration going and all of these things that I debate during night time, I get to debate again in the morning and then I, if I have songs or lyrics or ideas for any of it, I sing it into this iPhone and, and, and then it struck me that it sounds great to sing into an iPhone. And then I started thinking, yeah, maybe we can, you know, in, involve our fans in sending in stuff via their iPhones. And, and I had this Save Us chorus already written and this big Save Us part. So so we did that. We urged them to, to send in their, their contribution to the album. It was a great way for us to sort of knock on their doors and say, hey, uh, do you remember us? Uh, we're still here. And uh, will you remember us when, when this is over? And... Uh, it was also a great way for them to remember something great about this period, you know, uh, or, or during the pandemics to say, yeah, that's when we recorded the Evergrey album, not, no, that's when I lost my job or then that's when we were in lockdown or whatever. So, uh, and the same idea really for Midwinter Calls, but we needed this big ass choir thing for, for that song. And we were in the studio during the time that we, had these Swedish shows, so we figured, yeah, let's just bring a bunch of microphones and record them onto a song that they never heard. Uh, and we didn't play the song either. We just played a small melody, and then they, we stopped, and they uh, let them, you know, participate. We did that in Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Karlstad, so, which is a, another great way to sort of have the biggest choir in the world onto a studio album, which is quite unique as well. I mean, it is absolutely special and unique. And that's what really strikes me about this album. 
13 years and you have a sound that is still so evergreen, you can't mistake it, but it's also still new and fresh. So what did you really do to push yourself or evolve your sound since the last album? Any new skills that you picked up or things that inspired you? Hmm. I mean, since it was such a short amount of time in between the albums, I would say that uh, I do. I, Personally, I do a lot of other stuff as well with Silent Skies. We did two albums within this pandemic as well. And, and, and then I'm also in Redemption. So all of these things, together with the computer game music that I write with Vikram Shankar, they all help in developing my musicianship. And vocal-wise, what I and how I sing in Silent Skies, of course, affects the way that I sing in Evergrave but mostly because I've learned to sort of use other how should I put it, frequencies of my voice and put that also into Evergrade. But with the big bombastic sound of Evergrade, it does not sound anything like Silent Skies at all. So instead of maybe pushing myself to scream as loud and harsh as possible, I could now sort of lean back and do the same thing that I do within Silent Skies, but have a big wide chorus instead of a big harsh so I think that's one of the things that, that that is new and fresh on this album as well. And that's just the thing. My sort of tip for everyone out there who are aspiring to make their eighth or ninth or third album is keep it fresh for yourself at all times. Then, then it will be interesting for everybody else as well. And when it comes to your avenues of artistic expression, you have all of these different bands and projects. But one thing that I've always loved about Evergrey is that you bring the art in every aspect of developing the album. And what I've really enjoyed so far with the lead up to this album is the music videos that you've done. They're very narrative and very artistic. And I've noticed mm. as Evergrey has grown, especially since Hymns for the Broken, you've done a lot more um, narrative and cinematic music videos. So I guess I'd like to hear your inspiration behind them and working with your longtime um, director and producer for those videos, and especially the video series for um, A Heartless Portrait. Yeah, but as you say, it's a full package that we deliver. It's not only the music; it's the lyrics, it's the, it's the artwork, it's the photos, it's, uh, and of course the mix of the album. So we have this great team now with people with Jacob Hansing helping us mix the album, with Patrick Gulleas making the videos for us. We worked together for twenty years, and uh, me and uh, and also and um, Jacob Hansen has been working together for five albums now. Uh, Gianni Snack also makes the cover artwork, has worked with us for three albums now. And we, you know, we work in the studio here in Gothenburg. We recorded three last albums, I think, or four maybe even. So, I mean, we, we're sort of expanding this tight team that we have uh, with people that we have full confidence in. And, and, and uh, for me, it's extremely important to be involved in all of these aspects of the cultural package of Evergrey, if you will. But at the same time, I'm also leaving them to perfect themselves and be what they are best at. That's why I chose them from the beginning, you know. So I'm not there. Well, maybe in the sonic uh, mixing of the album, me and Jonas are there. <laughs> it can't be fun to mix an Evergrey album for Jacob, but whatever. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> so yeah, it's important. It's And all of it's important. And I think Maybe not everyone feels it is important, but for, for me it is. It takes a lot of trust to put that artistic element in so many other people's hands, especially for a project that's so close to your heart. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is extremely close to my heart. I, I, I've always written about how and where I see myself in the, in the world, you know, and, and that's what I'm also trying to sort of get across in the videos and this trilogy of videos that we do now which is we released the four, third third video next Thursday I think uh, which is the first chapter of a three story video three video story and but in the reversed order so now people need to watch it again you know it's like they start start with the chapter one and then they everything else makes sense hopefully but it's it's something we do because we as I said we need to keep it fun and interesting for ourselves and we need to develop our way of thinking and way of performing it in videos as well so and when it does come to the lyricism for this album and indeed where you do see yourself in the world what did you really want to get across in this album what is like the main themes that really hit home for you 
first and foremost that uh, I see looking at the world today I see a world that is getting more vile and violent and ruthless and 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 uh, cold uh, it's a world that I I wrote a song on the last album called Forever Outsider which is pretty much exactly tells the story that I want to say <laughs> still that uh, I don't want to belong in a world that does that you know uh, I, and the world is also for a young person like yourself you're you're lucky enough to be at a university but there are people in the world that are younger than you and or maybe don't have the ability or n funds to go to university and for those people it's hard to know that you need to criticize media and information and source of information and, and uh, I see people and young young people especially educating themselves by scrolling on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and and then it's very hard to find out who you are really you know because and that's my sort of message to 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 people even older people that if you're not certain of who you are I mean you make sure you know who you are before somebody else tells you who to be and and uh, because that's what all of these medias does you know they, they do that they tell you what to buy they tell you what to laugh at they tell you what to cry at they tell you what to watch and they keep you in their systems scrolling eight hours per day and if that's your role models maybe then you need to s sort of take a step back and have a reawakening like the song uh, so yeah those are the sort of underlying messages I'm trying to portray well, I guess I'm lucky because I got to grow up with Evergrey telling me it's okay to be myself. Exactly. Great. Um, Good for you. <laughs> and I guess I'm going to come back to the cover art a little bit because this, to me, is some of my favorite cover. The cover art is some of the favorite that you guys have ever done. Mm. Um, how much direction did you give your artist when it came to drawing it? And what really inspired this very dark but still so dynamic art? No, I mean, I, as I said before, I don't give them, I, I don't give him sort of guidelines. I tell him about the lyrics. I tell him about the title, of course, uh, and 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 then we sort of talk about it for a while, and then uh, and then he just goes with it, you know. And uh, in the end, maybe I change where the logo is, or I put a frame around it, or add some color splash to some part of the cover, but. Other than that, he's so talented that he needs to have his own artistic expression in, within Evergrey, right? So I feel that's important. I want them to feel like they're part of m making a product great, you know? Uh, if not, I can just hire someone to paint what I tell them to paint, you know? And just, I guess, a quick aside, because I didn't actually know how long I have you for. I just want to make sure I don't keep you over time. When's your next uh, interview? Let's see. You have me to 3.45. All six, right. Six more minutes. All right. I just want to make sure I'm not keeping you because I am sure that you are very busy as you have been for the last year. <laughs> yeah, for the last year. No, it's okay. Go ahead. If you have more, let's go. Oh, I, <laughs> I could keep you all day, which is why I asked. <laughs> so, and again, I'm just so inspired by the art, especially with this last run of albums. You've had such incredible merchandise, these exclusive vinyl runs, CDs, reissues, the limited edition box sets. You've had flags, patches. What has been your favorite piece of Evergrey merchandise? <laughs> it's been so much these last couple of years that I don't have a clue. I don't own anything of it myself because, because they send me these boxes of vinyls and stuff and I... I look at it and it looks fantastic and then I sort of put them aside and then and then I don't know where they are anymore and you know so <laughs> so but I mean I really love these photo books that we did I wish that we have done one for the for this album I'm gonna make sure that we make one for the next one uh, but you know uh, different labels have different packaging and and, and different approaches to merchandise uh, so yeah but I think that the, because it's also a great memory for me to sort of have that in in a book you know so so you're telling me there's no super special evergrey collector's items lying around your house nothing <laughs> you're yeah there are a bunch of them everywhere i look but i i don't know where, what it, what's in these cardboard boxes but i will look probably one day <laughs> <laughs> and 
it's fantastic that the band has been able to go on for so long. And you said you're you're hoping to keep on going as long as you can. Um, sure. What do you see as the next step for Evergrey in terms of either viewership or music or even just live performance? What's that next big thing you're looking for? I mean, we need to get out there and play now. Of course, we have two albums to s promote or or sell, if you will. But I mean, first and foremost, we have two more two albums that we need to make come alive in a live environment. For me, it's like releasing an album is maybe 60% of the of the full circle and when we get to play the songs live that's when you sort of close that circle so uh yeah it's uh, that's what we're looking forward to the most right now i see us doing that for a long while as it looks now and uh yeah and then it's back to the grind and writing another one i guess so it's <laughs> so i'm sure that your next tour will really draw from escape of the phoenix and a heartless portrait but how um, which songs do you think that you're most looking forward to playing live off these two albums? Oh, damn. I think we have a cool arrangement going now with the, in the absence of Sun, for instance, is one of those. And the Eternal Nocturnal is great and Weightless is fantastic live. Uh, what else is there? Where August Morns is great. Uh, for this this new album, we haven't even started rehearsing them yet. I mean, uh, we're doing that. I was just sitting, playing around with Save Us Now and 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 yeah that's where we'll start i mean there's so many songs on these two albums that i want to play so it's ridiculous uh so we're fighting over uh, what songs that we really love the most but yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna be a set list based on our latest releases for sure and even though it's going to be based on your latest releases you still always pull material from your older albums how would you say that especially now as you've grown as a musician so much how do you feel about your old albums? How do you look back at them and what's your relationship with them? I feel proud, if anything. I mean, I don't look back that much. Uh, uh, now they are live songs for me. It's not like I sit and listen to the In Search of Truth album or, you know, uh, dwell on it. But uh, it's it's music that I'm proud that, I, proud that we have written and uh, are proud that it's out there. But now it's not our music anymore. Now it's like everybody's music. And for us, it's uh, more important to concentrate on doing new stuff and, and, and playing the best we can live. But uh, yeah, and there's uh, not a single moment on any album that I'm not very proud of. So. Now, I know that you've been doing interviews, not even just for days. I'm sure it's been for months now and working this all out. Is there anything that people never ask you that you want to share or just perspective that you don't frequently get a chance to talk about? I, I, you know, I'm pretty good at making that room for myself. So if they don't ask, I just tell them, you know, so no, no I mean, there, there are all, always going to be people that are better or worse at asking questions or more have more or less fantasy when it comes to writing their questions so but uh, then it's your sort of job to make them intrigued or make it sound intriguing or interesting so no i mean the, uh, usually i'm pretty satisfied with the with the, with the with the questions actually nowadays i think people like you are more sort of interested in making it interesting for yourself as well i mean evergrey can make anything interesting so you've got that going for you <laughs> yeah lucky us <yes>, huh <laughs> you just heard an interview with tom from evergrey about their upcoming album a heartless portrait that will be out on may 20th stay tuned to hear the first single from the album save us well, thank you again so much for your time. It was an absolute pleasure to speak with you this morning. Um, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. You too. Thanks, Amanda. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.